you! Do you like free stuff? Well then this is the series for you. In this series I'll <clears throat> potentially give away an entire deck for free. I've got 5 episodes to turn 3 structure decks into a competitive branded deck and win a locals and if I can't I'll be giving it away to one lucky commenter. Is it even possible? You're about to find out. This is Yu-Gi-Oh! Win or bust! Okay, yeah, you heard the intro. This series gimmick is that I have to win a locals within five episodes, otherwise one of you lot get the deck. It's risky, but I'm up for the challenge. So let's lay down some ground rules. This episode, I'll be taking three structure decks to locals. But what do I do in the episodes after that? Well, I'm going to be spending $20 each episode to upgrade the deck. With things like rarity collection and how flexible branded can be, I'm sure I'll be able to make a monster out of this deck. And as for the giveaway, <clears throat> if it happens, I'll be checking the comments for every video so make sure to comment below what your favorite deck is in this format. Also, this series isn't going to be cheap, so if you want to support me, please hit that subscribe button and share it with a friend. About 80% of the people watching the video right now aren't subscribed, so if you click that button, by the end of 2024, we will most likely hit 2,000 subs. But with that out of the way, let's take a look at this list. Okay, so this is the list that we're rocking with for episode one. It's super basic, but with three structure decks, this is the best you can do. Once we start buying singles, the deck changes drastically and will be leagues better than it is right now. But with this list out of the way, how do I do at locals this week? Alright, so for round one, we actually have something pretty poetic. Three branded structure decks versus G on full power branded puppet lock and everything. Game one, he went first and while he had full combo, I had a single hand trap in the form of Ghost Ogre. I chained it to his Cartaceous effect. This way, he does get to fusion summon Grand Gugnol, which gets me out of the whole puppet lock situation. And I do surprisingly well at breaking his board. But with no way of stopping branded retribution to add back branded fusion, I'm actually just looking at a death sentence. And he easily breaks my board with the help of branded lost. If this situation wasn't dire enough, he actually puppet locks me on my following turn, and I promptly scoop. Game 2, I decided to go first and set up a board of Mirror Jade and Mercurier. Plus, I had opened D-Barrier, which I shotgun in his draw phase. Unfortunately, I had left a copy of Spurgan's kit on the board, allowing him to chain his Super Poly to make Draco Stapelia. This would be a definite game over, if not for the fact that he didn't have a single other playable card and had to pass. Mirror Jade destroys this Draco Stapelia in the end phase, and I set up another board consisting of Albion, Kit, and Mirror Jade. Plus, I got some good damage G drew into Lubelion on the next turn, but seeing as he didn't have anything playable on his last turn, I make the call that he doesn't have any other plays if I stop him here. So when he summons Sarnir, I use Mirror Jade to banish it. I end up being correct about this, and we go to a game three. Game three, he didn't brick, but his only play was to fusion deployment out of Cartesia, and I ghost over it. This does turn on his talents, but it doesn't draw him into anything playable. However, it did draw him into Thrust, which sets up branded fusion from his deck. Luckily for me, he can't activate it this turn because I don't have any monsters, but this does guarantee him follow up for his next turn. In addition to this, he sets an Imperm and passes. My hand is playable, but unfortunately my only real play was the normal summon Keeper of Dragon Magic and use his effect. And you may have guessed by now, but G chains his Imperm, and he ends up swiftly OTKing me on his next turn. This round went about as I expected, but I'm happily surprised that I was able to take a game. Good games to G. Now, since the goal of the series is to win a locals, this goal is already out of the picture, as more often than not, you actually have to have no losses. But I wanted to at least play until I was X2, as I thought it'd be cheap not to do so. Plus, I wanted to get some top cut prizing. So for round two, I was up against Raid Raptors. Unfortunately, this just wasn't my opponent's day when it came to him opening a playable hand. He simply sets two and passes. I'm able to establish a Mirror Jade, and even though he outs it on his next turn with Forbidden Droplet, I had opened D-Bearer and called Xyz, allowing me to live a turn as his deck really relies on that mechanic. Besides, since my Mirror Jade could still technically activate while it's negated and pay cost, I'm able to send my Albion to Graveyard, which allows me to grab a copy of Branded Loss in the end phase. Thanks to this, I'm able to OTK him uninterrupted on my next turn. And surprisingly, Game 2 was pretty much the same, so I end up taking this round. Good games to my opponent. Round 3, I was up against JD on Scareclaw. Now for any other deck, this may be a reasonable matchup, but for branded and very specifically 3 structure decks, this deck is a nightmare thanks to a card named Scareclaw Tryhard. It basically changes all monsters on the field to defense and is unaffected by defense position monsters. So I really don't have that many ways to get rid of it if he establishes it. And if I'm being completely honest, he had a very easy time of getting it on the field. I had a couple ways to destroy it, sure, but the Scareclaw Monster Reborn could protect it, and by the time I got through that, those, he had set up a line to lethal. Next episode, I'm definitely picking up branded banishment to side against matchups like this. But in the meantime, good games to JD. 
Okay, so obviously we were never going to win a locals with just three structure decks, but this deck is already way more playable from the jump than I thought it would be. I've already planned ahead and bought the cards for episode two, and with the reprints from Rarity Collection 2, this deck is extremely budget friendly. And at the time of recording, we got some set spoilers for the new Battles of Legends set, and in it is a reprint of Cartesia and Grand Guignol, which is a really good engine for this deck, and without the reprint, I'd be priced out of them. So overall, so far, I could definitely recommend this archetype to any beginners looking for something relatively cheap to play. But for now, my name is Gokazemi, and this has been the first episode of Yu-Gi-Oh! Win or Bust! See you next time.